This is Football at Four. Football at Four, powered by the Inside the Birds podcast. And it is brought to you by Bet365, whatever the sport, whatever the moment, it's never ordinary. At Bet365, Adam Kaplan is here. He's going to tell us the, how the schedule is put together. I gave you my picks for the schedule. I'll give them to uh, Adam, see what he thinks, because he's going to explain how the schedule is put together. I gave my picks. I got seven one o'clocks, four four o'clocks, two Sunday nights, two Monday nights, a Thursday night, and a Friday game. That is my uh, my loose prediction of the Philadelphia Eagles schedule. Adam Kaplan, how are you, my friend? I'm good, Mike. Yeah, it's 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 always interesting. Everybody knows who they're playing, but to to guess that's all you could really do is guess with a little bit of an insight. And I'll give you the insight because I've sat on scheduling calls with the NFL before. Uh, when they let the media in, they, they do a great job of explaining how they put it together, which I'll, I'll, I'll give to you in a minute. It's, it's interesting. I've talked to Joe Banner, the former Eagles uh, president, about it, about a really interesting story about, you remember when, oh boy, it, it might be 08 or 09, I don't remember the year, but they played, I'm going to say the Cardinals maybe on a, I think it was the Cardinals. Anyway, they, they played at home on a Sunday, and ridiculously they had to play Seattle on a Thursday night. That Joe told me that was the last time that would ever happen. Like, he, there's no way you're sending a team from the East Coast to the West Coast on a short week. You're just not doing that. And I was interesting because you know, I, I didn't know you could do that. He goes, oh, he goes, oh yeah, we could put requests in. He goes, oh yeah, we have to. Uh, they should have done that, obviously. They, they, and, and believe me, Joe said they let the league know about it. And I spoke to the league about, it and yeah, they, they heard from Joe, and they they knew that that was not a good idea. Uh, so, yeah, they, they, they do look at a lot of, of scheduling quirks and make sure that you, they do their best for it not to happen, but there's only so much you can do. Yeah, so uh, I'll just uh, quickly read to you just, uh, you know, uh, what I came up with here. And uh, sure. I've got uh, Carolina, Tampa, Atlanta, Cleveland, Washington, and the two giant games at 1 o'clock. I've got Dallas at 425 with Pittsburgh, L.A., and New Orleans, the 425 games. Two Sunday nighters, I'm going Dallas and Cincinnati. Two Monday nighters, Baltimore and Jacksonville. I think you're going to get the Doug Peterson, uh, Jason Kelsey, all that on a Monday night. And your Thursday night game will be uh, Eagles, Washington, you know, Amazon Prime. Hey, can you throw us an NFC East game here? You get the lousy one. Yep. And then the Friday yep. night, of course, you got the, that game. So that's my amateur uh, putting the schedule <laughs> together. All right, so a couple things that I found interesting from talking to the league about how they put the schedule together. So every team has to turn in their conflicts, in addition to the requests, which we'll explain in a minute. Right, these are the like concert are, events, stuff like that. Exactly. The concert events, let's say – and, I'll, and this has happened to me, I'm sure it's happened to you, Mike, is that it's like, okay, a Sunday Eagles game, you've got the Phillies in September, you've got the Flyers, you know, the Flyers play a lot at 7 o'clock, at least when I follow the Flyers, they played a lot at 7 o'clock on Sunday nights in, in season. And as you mentioned, there's a concert. You, you want to avoid those kind of things. But also, when let, let's, let's say there's something, the, the, the stadium is not available, or the area let's say they know it's a bad time for traffic. Like there's something going on. They're not going to want fans to be there to have to deal with well, it. Here's a, que- here's a question stuff. for you. Let me, let me uh, yeah. interject with this. Sure. Do they have intuition? Like the Phillies are good. They could have world series games in October. Yeah. So we don't want to, yeah. So yeah. we don't want to yeah. give you night games yep. in October. Yes. In fact, the league, in fact, I think Mike North from the scheduling committee, He's actually from Philly. I've met Mike before. He's the guy with Howard Katz. They put it together. I remember Mike actually talking about that teams will turn that in. Hey, let's let's schedule this for one Eastern. That way we're not – we don't have a night game. Well, they probably would like a primetime game, but they're concerned about the potential of there being a, uh, you know, a, a, a Phillies game at night. Yes, they do do that. But conflicts and then the requests. Like let's say you want to buy week in week 12 or 11 or something. You can do that. Now, the league is not required to give you that, but they will do their best. They, they, I, hearing the league talk about it, they do all that they can to, to honor these requests. And as ben, Joe Banner explained to me, they do their own data. They do their own research in that, okay, like if you have a game on Thursday, you, you know, you, you, for one week, you might want to have – you don't want to be playing on a short week the next week. You don't want to, you know, whatever the case may be, you, if you're playing a Sunday, 
or you, you don't want to have like four Thursday night games. Like you, whatever the whatever the data shows in sports science about recovery, clubs have all thirty teams have this. Also coming out of a bye week, one where they want to one where they want to play, or or the I, who was who were they were. It might have been Dallas. I don't remember the team. The, the Eagles play, had this really weird schedule. I think it was last year. They played a lot of teams. Maybe it was two years ago. They a lot of teams out of the bye week. It's just really out, who are coming off their bye. I, that, did, that's yep. a, that and that helps with rest. That's the stuff that the, the the league should never allow. And I don't know why that happened. They're so good at what they do. They they have so many computer um, sort of models that they put together that should never have been allowed. So. But again, the, the, the league, just I wanted to talk about this today, Mike, because it's fascinating. You know, I, looking at my notes from the last time I was on one of those calls, it was like the coolest thing. Because you, you get to hear that when they pull the curtain, and by the way, they start in like February and they're done, uh, they, it, they're done at a certain time. And another thing for you, Mike, which I also, and I knew this was the case because you could start seeing, they have what are called national teams, you know, Dallas, obviously. The Eagles are seen as a national team because of the media market, when they're good, Mike, their ratings are, are unbelievable. And they also do this. They, they also try to predict who are, who's going to be the next breakout team. Well, last year, who opened up week one against the Chiefs? Do you remember? Yeah, with Detroit. Yes, they predicted that the Lions were a breakout team. You know, the, the league doesn't always get that right, but they were, you know, they were my breakout team last year. I'm sure probably a lot of people. Remember, I came on your show last May, not this May, but last May. I said, get on them now when we're going with the future numbers. And the, the, their future numbers went up like a game and a half by, or two games because they had a they were a breakout team and quite frankly should have gone to the Super Bowl. They, should, they choked that game against the Niners. So the league does look at that stuff. They they try to predict who's going to be the best teams. Uh, Adam Kaplan, football at four. So uh, I gave you my amateur uh, pick of the games. Uh, who <laughs> on this list uh, of games? Uh, obviously, uh, you got the Brazil game. Is that, is that, uh, that's not. You're allowed six prime time games. That one does. Does that count against their prime time? Does that well, count? How does that work? It's a it's a prime time game. By the way, it used to be five. And remember, they never really announced that you could have six games. It just happened, and people are like tweeting at us, like, "Wait, I thought the league said only five games." So yeah, it's definitely six, and yeah, well that should count, Mike. That's a primetime game. That's a Friday night, first time ever. That is, is it at eight Eastern? If I'm not mistaken. Uh, that's a good question. I'll find I that out. They did, but okay, I thought they did, but anyway, so the time is out. They do have the time. I just don't remember it. I thought it was eight, but anyway, eight o'clock. Five it five is five. eight o'clock. It's okay. Friday night okay. at eight o'clock. And by the way, I have no idea what time that is in Brazil. <laughs> Don't ask me. It's only, uh, I but. think the time difference is only an hour or maybe two. Oh, good. It, it's not okay. a big difference. Good. Okay. So here's, look, you're right. I heard you before I came on. There's, the, and, and, and what you just said now, there's, the, the Eagles, one of the Eagles games will definitely be at a minimum of a 450, you know, 425. But the question is, will it get, I, I'm going to predict it'll be, they'll have, a, they'll have a primetime game. Again, who the hell knows? But I'm just giving you a. Sure. You're one of mine, whether it's home or away. This one, and, and by the way, they're in week one. They're gonna, the, as we know, it. it uh, the Ravens are going to be in week one now. Um, I'm going to say the game at the Ravens. I think that just it's such it's such an interesting matchup. You know, they, they're only a 90 minute drive, as you know, Mike, depending where you live. Uh, that to me has got to be a prime time game. Uh, uh, I could certainly see it being a four o'clock game, but why prime time makes sense to me. You know what made great sense to me, that game against Pittsburgh here? I'm going to put that one in there. And also Cincinnati, Joe Burrow, and obviously Hurts. Um, now, what, what the league does sometimes, in it, whether it's a Amazon game or whoever, or you know, a Saturday game, they may have, and this happens with all really good teams, they're going to have, they could have a primetime game where you go, why are they giving us the Giants? You know, which will probably not going to be very good, but... The, the Giants are they, they get a huge number with the Giants because they're a New York based team, so that's that's why it happens. Yeah, I, I you know, and uh, well, um, th- definitely the Cowboys game. That's either a Sunday or a Monday every single year. That we know. Yeah, it has to be. It has to be the Ravens game. Yeah, I actually, I too, I have the Ravens game. Actually, I have Ravens. I love that one. What, no, I gave them a Monday nighter on that one, and the Pittsburgh yeah. uh, Cincinnati I put on Sunday night. Pittsburgh, I went four twenty five. The old CBS saying, "Hey, we'll get we, we want the yeah, uh, sure. the thing there." But sure. I think that Jacksonville yeah. game is going to be the one because don't you think they're going to want to do something special? The networks with Peterson coming back to Philly. Yeah, but you know what? The last time, if you recall, that was the rain game. Was that a one o'clock or four o'clock game? Definitely was not prime time. Was that game when in Philly? Rained, and, 
Yes. Remember when? Um, oh yes, when, it was. Uh, it was. Trevor Lawrence had five fumbles. <laughs> yes. Now, now you say the rain and everything. Yeah, I remember. It's an awful game. Yeah, they um, came back and won it. That was actually a great comeback. Well, yeah. and I would imagine with ESPN and Kelsey, maybe they do something a little mm-hmm. like with those two. He gets an interview with them or something like that. They try oh, to make maybe. something maybe special. So. Special there. So, uh, all right. So, the schedule tomorrow night is when they uh, will reveal the full schedule. Anything of the five games that have been released already that stick out? I love that. It's at the Ravens Chiefs that I see. Did I see that correctly? Ravens oh, Chiefs is the opener. Yeah. It, that's the. I was hoping. Yeah. I, my, yes. That's that's the. Is that the Monday night opener? No, that's the Thursday night opener. Thursday is night. Uh, okay. yeah, 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 that'll champs, be the first yeah, game of the champs. year. And then the Philly yeah. game is on yeah. Friday. Right. And then they have released the Jets Jets Niners is the first Monday night football game. Yeah. And was that the Sunday night game or the Monday night game when when Rogers tours Achilles? That was the opening. It was Monday night last year. And everybody's saying, oh, you're you're sticking it to the Jets (laughs) fans again uh, by doing that. Now, the Bengals, I mean, the the Chiefs, Adam, they play the Ravens in week one and the Bengals in week two. I saw that. Yeah, I'm, I'm really liking that. You know what? The league likes the court. It's you know it's a quarterback driven league. The league loves the quarterbacks. Hurts, Burrow, Mahomes, obviously. Okay, not so much Dak anymore, but Dallas is a national team. Uh, the Lions became a national team last season. I'm looking for that next team. They don't now. They're probably going to have to do it for another year. The next breakout team, and they came out of nowhere last year, is the Houston Texans because they got the quarterback. Yes. Yep. See, I, I think, Mike, sometimes the league is reluctant to jump in unless they see it for maybe consecutive years. I'm all in on the Texans. I've looked at their schedule. Yeah, it's harder. It's it's Their division's actually better than it has been in recent years. They're going to be, they're, I don't know about a national team, but they're going to be popular because they got a dynamic young quarterback who was elite last season as a rookie, believe it or not. TJ Stroud was awesome. Yeah. And you saw that they got Stefan Diggs. They had the great draft in, in uh, 2023. They're 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 a team that's they're they're the next Lions to me, man. They're the team people should be back should be backing publicly. No, that's a good pick. That's a good pick as like uh, the team that will pop up on more national games than you think. Uh, the Houston Texans is a good one there. All right, uh, we'll get the schedule by the time Adams back on Friday. Uh, he will have a chance to have taken a look at it, broke it down, combed it, and looked all over it, and he'll have his thoughts on it coming up on Friday's edition of Football at Four here on the Sports Bash Live. But there's a little insight on how the NFL puts their schedule together and some of the quirks and uh, some other nuggets there. All right, Adam, thanks, man. Thank you.